Hey, 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 guys. Welcome to Prophetic Encouragement. It's your girl, Trey Tremaine. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I stand with God's will for your life. Thank you for being here. Real quick, I had to come on here and release this again. Um, uh, to my sisters, it's just the downloads from the Lord, so I'm going to be obedient. The same energy, the same tenacity, the same focus, okay? The same uh, 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 creativity that you are willing and anxiously waiting to give your husband, give it to you. All right, here we go. I was having a conversation and then the Lord allowed it to slip out my mouth. You know, we as women are creative, right? A wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman pluckets it down with her words. Um, you know how when we get married, we be so, and listen, listen, and I thank you Holy Spirit, okay, correct me. When you meet a man and you exclusively dating, come on. If you, if you meet somebody, you really like them and you are exclusively dating them, you know what you do? You go and you start helping them build their business. You start helping them get established and you're not even wifey yet. Okay. You help them get registered and you dating them and dating them. You give them keys to your car you give them access to your credit line you put them on your credit you help them you are and i'm talking about you, your boyfriend okay technically right that's what because you're not married right you uh you uh, uh put things in your name make big purchases you go out and you spend money on them you take them out you wine and dine them you're trying to show them you're not just here for their that you're not here for their money at all you, you got a point to prove you that chick you that girl right and, and then they dating you and dating you and you gotta fight them to propose to you you gotta fight them to marry you but you do all of that right they go ahead and they marry you eventually and you still are missing yourself you you and then if you didn't get married how i heard it was all of that you was getting ready to put into bro all of that that you put into that man you need to put it in yourself. You need to start your six-figure fig business, your seven-figure business. Everything that you was willing to do, oh, I got it. Oh, I'll answer that phone call. Or oh, I'll reply. I'll respond back to that email. Everything that you are getting ready to do for that man, he tell you you to wire him some money. <laughs> he tell you to lay down, have his kids. You go on and do it. That's a no-no. You do not cast your pearls into the swine. You do not waste your favor and your oil. When you do that, you're not operating from a place of wisdom. You're operating from a place of need and uh, manipulation and control. You're operating from a place that is not an example of being the righteousness of God, mirror the daughter of God. You willing to reschedule just like that for him. And he not even your husband. Now, I, 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 I don't want to talk too much about the marriage part of it. Because you are, so, you are to help your husband when you get married. But technically, that is you help him according to his vision. Okay, we're not going to go there. Whatever he has that you know that is the vision of God, you help him. But if he don't got no vision and he just got that same old lifestyle that he 
uh, and career and job that uh, that does not allow you to be creative in your creativity that you were born to do. If it does not allow you to open and flourish to help him as his wife, like where do you fit in? Because if he's already been working on that job, what you gonna do? Just come and bring him lunch? If, and if that's what you call growth and being fruitful and multiplying, then so be it. Because I know a lot of women that get married and they're frustrated because they don't have nothing more to do other than being this man's wife. And they can't use their helpers anointing, other skills that they have on the inside of them that will cause them to flourish and, and even to feel uh, valued. Boy, I tell you, to shine, to, to even birth out other things their life and their husband but that's a whole nother message back to let's back up so the very thing that you are willing to do with this man that is your boyfriend and y'all know how i feel about having a boyfriend that's just me personally okay it, i'm not even gonna get into that with y'all right now but i will be talking about that in a few more days but if you are seeing someone exclusively, technically he's your brother. Because the Bible says that when a man lay with a wife, that marriage is consummated. The two becomes one flesh that when he leaves his mother and he gets married, he takes his wife. They become one flesh. Not in a dating process. Getting to know each other. Dating is to get data. And here you are. You got no degree. You, you dropped out. You, you partially started. You didn't finish. Everything you do, you can't even finish. Everything you do, you can't even start. You don't believe in yourself like you believe in that man. Oh, my God, I just hear you. Woo, glory to God, Holy Spirit. You don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in your dreams. You don't believe that you can do it. And your kids are watching you. You don't even push your kids' dreams. Their gifts, their call. Don't you know it is better to, to even work with a child that is young because they know what they want. We as kids, when we are young, we know what we want to do. But it's the parents' job to steward that and guide us and lead us. Look at some of the greats today. I can name them name by name. I can go down the list. And they said, when I was a kid, I always wanted to do it. And they did it. And look at them. They're very successful to this day. But we get beside ourselves. And if we don't nurture our kids, right, we put all that into this one man. And then what happens? Usually, they get up they leave because they have no more use for you they want something new they get up and they're gone they say never buy a man's pair of shoes because he'll walk out with them on and if a man stays with you trust me when i tell you he got low self-esteem and he ain't about to change nothing in his life you may say, oh, well, yeah, well, I married my man and I did this for him and, and this, that, and the other. Okay, I bet you you married his reality and not his potential. Okay. I bet you he's still on that same job and it's too late for him to try to go start a whole, a whole new, new career. Okay. And again, I, I'm, I'm trying not to go over there, but I hear you, Holy Spirit. It's like back and forth. But hear this encouragement. Whatever you was willing to go ride or die and do for your dude, you better do for you. Okay? Ain't that much loyalty and, and workmanship in the world. You think I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to pour into you and help you know you're going to see my worth. You're going to see my value. You're going to make it right. You're going to seek God from my hand. You're going to find me in a place of worship. You're going to know who I am in the spirit. First of all, before you come to me, you're going to know who you are. And you're going to know all your visions, right? You're going to know what God has required you to do, what God has called you to rule over, what God has called you to name, what God has called you to, uh, uh, to, 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 to do. Um, so that way, when I come into your life, I can compliment the things. I am suitable. I am fit to help you. Okay? 
Because if I'm if I'm if, if I'm if I'm called to the cooking industry, why am I linking up with you and you over here working on um, the hospital industry? You you're you're in the healthcare industry. That ain't working. And now you want to open up a practice and you want me to quit my cooking job to come and help you. No, that ain't working. Anyway, y'all, that's it. That's all. Still feel like something crawling on me. I tell you, this wouldn't be good. Y'all, my neck is clearing up. God is so good. I can't wait to share with y'all what I've been doing with myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I heard that. And I said, wow, that is so true. We as women, we got to stop that. We got to stop that. Stop being so gun ho and ready to go ahead. Oh, I need to eat my apples. Um, got me some apples. Stop being so gun ho and ready to just go ahead and, oh, I'm going to do this for my boo. I'm going to do this for, you say that mess for women of the world. You ain't get all my energy. Uh-uh. And then when I'm then when you done with me, you don't want none of me. Mm -mm. And I'm going to tell you, they stay. Because they got it together and they know you're going to take their mess. But I'm the one to be cheating on you behind closed doors, online cheating, pornography. That's why you really ain't supposed to be having sex before marriage. Let me go. Oh my. Right here. Let's make it a little lighter. Sis, listen, I believe in you, but you need to believe in yourself. The same way you believe in that man, the same way you get ready to ride, die hard, and build, stay up all night, willing to travel with him, willing to take his cause, willing to show up, you need to do that for you. And and, and, and let's move outside of the uh, relationship part, the romance. Let's talk about it. You ready to help everybody else. Cause some of that, some of y'all, that ain't y'all issue. Your issue is being a people pleaser. You ready to help your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your grandma, your auntie, your uncle? Cause you feel you are obligated and you owe them. Unless it's an assignment, do it. But baby, when you look back over your life and you look at all that you do for them, and then you do none for yourself, something's wrong with that. Either you walking in the spirit of Downton Thomas or you walking in the spirit of manipulation and control. Whether it's coming at you or whether you giving it out. I'm going to do this for you and you do that for me. But for the most part, for the angle that I'm talking about, what I hear in the spirit, what I heard yesterday is that we got to come away from being so ready to do for somebody else. But you don't do for yourself. Stop. Hallelujah. Believe in yourself. Promote yourself. Brand yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. Nothing before God. Because God knows how to put the finesse and the finished touches on everything that you create. That he called you to do it. I always, excuse me, tell y'all that. When God has called you to something. When God is gifting you to do it. And he's called you to it. He will bless your hands as you work. He will establish you. Hallelujah. And it shall prosper. Back up and assess some things. Take inventory on who you are connected to. Okay. No. This apple is good. I'm full, y'all. I feel the Holy Spirit so strong on me. And I'm full. Mm. I am full. But I want you to be encouraged. And I want you to really... Set the bar high for yourself. Believe in yourself. And do for yourself first. And then you can show up for others. Okay? I pray this message is for those that watch. 
thumbs up. Chat with me in the comments. This is Prophetic Encouragement. I love you with the love of the Lord. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on your notification bell to all. <sighs> but I keep hearing that. In this season, we're not doing it. In this season, we're not doing it. I'm not doing it. You don't need to do it. Hallelujah. Y'all, this apple is real good. <laughs> hey! Listen, y'all. If you find yourself doing for that person more than you do for yourself, this explains the poverty in your life. All right? Yeah. It's an eye-opener. I love you.